please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on that like button if you like my video. Also click on that notification bell. Thank you. In this video, we will cover the pre-DevOps challenges, the issues, the challenges that existed before DevOps was introduced. The very first one is the traditional way of running software development and delivery infrastructure. Meaning there were a development team working independently. There was uh, an infrastructure team or operations team working independently. And there was a lot of issues in between them. There were long and repetitive procedure until the software package passes the QA test. And that causes lack of communication. And there was a lack of new strategy for the software development and delivery procedure. Because of all of that, there was a huge gap between the software development team and the IT operations team. And by the way, the development team consisted of together as a development program or QA or designers. And the operations team consisted of all the people who support the infrastructure or compute. All right, let's visualize it. So this will, will have a better understanding why we needed DevOps so badly. On the left hand side, we have a developers or programmers in a company, let's say XYZ. They are responsible to write a code. They write a code maybe in C++, Java, Python, or in any language of their choice or the language as per the policy of the company. Then they convert that code into a software executable or ISO image, and then they passes that software to QA team to test that code. Now the QA team will take the code or the software and install in the QA environment and test it. Now as they are testing it, the developers or programmers has nothing to do but wait. Now that is, of course, as they're waiting, they have nothing to do that costing money to the company. And of course, if the QA team rejects that code or rejects that software, it goes back to developers to rewrite the code and fix it back and forth, back and forth. But let's say after a lot of back and forth, it goes, it passes it. And now it goes to the system administrators or operations team to deploy the code. Now, there might be a possibility where there's an issue with the software and it causes some kind of memory leak in a production environment. So it sends it back to the QA, QA sends it back to the developer. Again, it, it actually creates huge gap. It takes a lot of time. So let's say if the code gets deployed successfully, now that code or that software is released to the end users. Those are the end users who are actually going to run that application. Now, if you are an iPhone user or Android user, you probably notice that many times that Apple or Samsung will send you um, updates. Now, have you ever thought what those updates for and why do they send it? It's because they found a bug in the newest released software or newest ISO update. That's why they send you that patch update so you could fix it. Now within the company, that application or software goes back to developer so they could fix the bug. So that is why the DevOps became so popular so we could eliminate the repetitive cycles of these software going back and forth and to save time and to deliver the best possible software or application for the company. If you want to learn more about Linux, check out my best-selling course on Linux at udemy.com or you could go straight to my website utclisolutions.com and you will find the exact same course there.